Hey. There we go. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I am Mary Beth in My Fearless Kitchen, and holy smokes, what a day we have had. Um, so the original plan was to do this at 10 o'clock Central Time, 11 o'clock Eastern Time, and then my very one my very excellent helper Danielle had a scheduling conflict and then I realized that I also had a scheduling conflict so we pushed it back I just came home from my son's school I was there for two hours um, with 15 three four and five year olds um, I am not gonna do that again <laughs> that may or may not be wine that it totally is wine <laughs> it's totally wine it well it's only 115 here but it's no judgment. 515 somewhere else, <laughs> and I don't even care because I don't know how those teachers do it all day, every day. But holy crap, yeah. guys. It's This week is Teacher Appreciation Week. If you haven't thanked your teachers yet, thank them, to, if your kid's teachers, whatever, thank them today. They need a big thank you. They need a hug. They need lots and lots of wine. Cases. 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 <laughs> so go say thank you. Um, yeah, I'm going to be sipping on this while we're doing it because holy smokes. But I have to say that this is a good relaxing thing to come home to. Not just, the, I mean, the wine helps, but not just the wine. Like, so I'm coming home to my friend Danielle. My husband's truck is here, so he's probably around here somewhere. I haven't actually seen him. He's working on the tree for he's work Oh, he's working on the tree house? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Well, that'll make Joseph happy. Yeah. I thought he had to go back to work, so we'll <laughs> see. <laughs> 15 minutes ago so who knows um but we, you know we're hanging out in the kitchen we're cooking we're baking we're gonna do some fun stuff we've got delicious yummy strawberries which how can you go bad with strawberries and wine um so here we go we're gonna jump right in and i'm gonna turn on the oven because it needs to preheat to 400 because i forgot to do that um okay so today we are going to be making homemade strawberry shortcakes we're gonna start off with the shortcakes and then we'll talk some about strawberries. And then we'll take a look at the little garden starts yeah. that we planted last week. And I've got something else fun to show you guys too. So the pain in the neck thing about shortcakes is that it calls for you to cut in butter. If you've never cut in butter before, it sounds strange, right? What a weird term. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a pain. Nobody, if anybody says, oh no, it's easy, they're lying to you. It sucks, I hate it. But I have a trick and a shortcut and a way to do it. So we'll, let's just jump right in and we'll get started with how you're supposed to cut in butter and then we'll show you the other way to do it. So I have got some flour and some sugar, just a little less sugar now than I started with. <laughs> Um, and this is baking powder and baking soda and salt. Um, I do have this recipe on my website, uh, myfearlesskitchen.com. Just search strawberry and it'll come up with a couple different strawberry recipes, including homemade strawberry shortcakes. But when we're done here, I will link it down at the bottom in the description so you'll be able to find it. Let me, I need a mixing thing. A mixing thing. A mixing thing. We're very technical here <laughs> in my fearless kitchen. I also need a pastry butter. I know I own a pastry butter here. Okay, so we'll just give this kind of a rough toss, our dry ingredients here. Now, the butter. When you're cutting in butter, you want very cold right out of the refrigerator butter. This is a third of a cup of butter. And this morning I just sliced it and then just stuck it right back in the fridge. You want your butter to be cold. The whole point of cutting in butter is that you want little teeny chunks of butter spread all evenly throughout your dry ingredients. So to do that with a pastry blender, you need a bigger bowl than what you think you're going to need. And you just take your pastry blender and you do this. Over and over and over and over and over again until that butter is all kind of chopped up and mixed in and all of the instructions will stay until it looks like coarse crumbs. Mm. I have had surgeries on both of my wrists. They're fine now, but this still makes them hurt. I hate this. It takes forever. It's a pain in the neck. 
and it hurts. Like literally it hurts. If you don't have a pastry blender and you still want to do this, you can take two knives and cut in the butter. Hmm. This sucks even more. <laughs> Hate. Tell us something you don't Hate like. It. <laughs> so instead, we're gonna cheat. Oh yeah, I like we're cheaters. Using a food processor. All right, so we're taking our dry ingredients and our cold butter, and we're gonna put it in the food processor. Hopefully, not make a giant mess. I swear, I do this even without wine. <laughs> there we go. And we're so, gonna cheat. A little bit of cheat. Okay. And then lock that puppy up. And then we're just gonna pulse this a couple times. butter is cut in hmm. it's every everything's gonna say until it looks like coarse crumbs mm -hmm. right it kind of does yeah there's that's a bigger hunk of butter so we could just break it up with your fingers a little bit hmm. but you can see there's you know like there's little bits of butter kind of evenly spread all throughout this and that's it we're done it is so much easier it is so much faster it makes any any recipe that says to cut in butter I used to automatically say, nope, uh-uh, not going to do it. But now that I know this trick, I do it all the time. <laughs> it doesn't bother me at all. So there are our dry ingredients with our cut-in butter. Next, we're going to mix up our wet ingredients. So we need one egg. I, When I am shopping for eggs at the grocery store, I always, always, always buy white eggs. There's no nutritional difference between brown and white eggs. They're exactly the same. They just come from a different breed of chicken. We happen to have brown eggs in the kitchen right now because a friend of ours has hens and they lay eggs like crazy. <laughs> and we buy her eggs because we see her all the time. So I have brown eggs now because they're convenient. Um, all right, so an egg, some plain Greek yogurt, not vanilla flavor, just plain old Greek yogurt. A little bit of milk and a little bit of vanilla and we're just going to mix all that together. The Greek yogurt, um, if you've never cooked with it before, it's super easy to cook with. This just gives it a little um, kind of a like a buttermilk kind of tang, just a little sour, not overpowering, not like lemony sour. Get that yogurt mixed in there a little bit more. All right, and then that goes in the dry ingredients. And then we're just going to use the fork again and mix this up just a little bit, just until everything is kind of moist. We are not you're not looking for like a soupy batter you're not looking to get all the lumps out you just want everything combined and everything to stick together how easy was that and now we get our shortcake on. Now we get our shortcake on. How long did that take? Uh, it took less than 10 minutes. Yep. It took about seven. Seven minutes for shortcake batter. We talked about wine and teachers for two or three minutes. <laughs> and we messed around with that stupid pastry blender. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Don't do that. All right, so here we go. Shortcake. All right, so I made some earlier today, a little different technique. So we will get those out and compare them. It smells good. These are done. 
So you're just gonna drop these on your uh, baking sheet here. Usually you would wanna use a greased baking sheet. Um, I am using some very well seasoned stoneware so I don't grease it but they will stick a little bit. You can shape them a little. Part of, I think, the fun stuff about homemade shortcakes is that they do, they're kind of uneven and they look kind of funny. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to shape them so they're like somewhat round. Let's see, like that one. Or so they at least stick together. It will be, this is a sticky dough, and that's okay. Ooh, I just made that one huge. <laughs> Let's give this one some love. So this recipe would be yes. a nice, simple, like, Mother's Day treat. This would be a perfect Mother's Day treat. Dad and kids yep. get in the kitchen. Absolutely. This is great. This, again, we made this in less than 10 minutes. Um, even with some monkeying around, goofing off in the kitchen. Because, hey, if you can't goof off in the kitchen, where are you going to goof off? Okay, so let me get this off my hands. Let me get these out of the way. We're going to take a look at these. Okay, so, easy peasy shortcakes. And... Um, my oven's not hot enough yet. Not, so you're going to put these in a 400 degree <laughs> oven for about 16 to 18 minutes. My oven is close. It's 390 right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw them in. And then we don't have to think about it anymore. I like not thinking. Okay. Alexa, set a timer for 16 minutes. 16 minutes. Okay. Does anybody else use kitchen time to relax? Or is this, like, is that weird? Is this a stressful time for most people to be in the kitchen? I'm getting to where it's pleasant. It's getting better? Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's made the difference? What makes it pleasant versus it used to be stressful? Uh, watching your videos and how Aww. it doesn't have to be a cookie cutter, mm -hmm. you know? It doesn't have to be perfect, yeah. right? I just smashed those together with my fingers. Right. One was really little, one was really big. I kind of split them up. And it's just trial and error. Yeah. It's just, it's just playing with it. Even if you mess it up, it's not going to be poison. Right. You can still eat it. So, okay. Let's talk about strawberries because that's the best part of the strawberry shortcake. Mm -hmm. um, I bought three. <laughs> it's hot now. <laughs> hot enough. So I bought three pints of strawberries yesterday. Um, for the shortcake this morning, I took one of those pints and rinsed them off. Chopped them up, mixed them with some sugar. They've been sitting in the refrigerator with sugar making, can you see the syrup that they make? Oh when yeah. Mix with sugar. Mmm, yum, yum, yum. So that has been, it's 1.30. That's been probably about three hours that they've been sitting. That's, so you do want to do that a little bit ahead of time to get that nice syrup on the bottom, um, but it really doesn't take very long. So strawberries, when you're buying strawberries, you want to take a good look at the top and take a look at the bottom of the box when you're looking at them. You want berries that are nice and bright red. The greens look still really bright green and fresh. They look really plump. Obviously any signs of mold, you don't wanna buy those. If the berries are starting to look a little bit dry or a little bit wilty, you wanna pass on those too. Um, but, and I learned this trick from my friend Danny to always check the bottom of the bag of the box too because you know you you can't tell just from the top there's like three layers of berries in there and the one this one right here in the middle on the bottom might be gross and moldy um, and if you see that you don't you want to pass on that whole thing so when you get them home berries need to be kept in your refrigerator any kind of berries strawberries actually you want to keep them in the vegetable drawer that's your higher humidity drawer um, Berries will, they will mold, but um, more commonly is that they'll dry out and they get like kind of wrinkly and the seeds look like they're really popping out of the surface of the berries. So you do want to keep them in your high humidity drawer, your vegetable drawer. And don't wash them until you're ready to use them. 
If you're just going to grab a handful for a snack, take a handful out, rinse them off, dry them, cut the tops off and eat them. Keep the rest of them in their original packaging in the refrigerator. That's the best way to store them to keep them fresh. If you want to wash the whole pint worth, these have these handy dandy little holes in the bottom of them. So you can use it like a colander and just run this whole thing under the water in your, in your sink. Just cool running water, give them a really good rinse kind of shake them off to dry them a little bit. We're going to go do that right now. Are we going to? Yeah, we're going to do that right now. Danielle's been cleaning, so we have cleaning <laughs> products. It's fine. So, give these just a quick rinse. This is all they need. Just a quick, quick rinse here. If I don't need them in a hurry, I will kind of shake them there. I'll put them in my dish drainer to let them dry. I will let them sit on a towel on the counter to let them dry. But today we are going to use a berry spinner because that's fun. Berry spinner? A berry spinner. What kind of tricks are you up to? Oh, so many tricks. So um, here's the thing with any kind of produce, but berries like this in particular, if you were to rinse these off, leave them out to air dry for a little while, they're never gonna get totally dry. That's just kind of the nature of the beast, is they won't get dry. So if you rinse off your whole pint, eat a couple, put them back in the refrigerator, they're gonna stay damp, that's what's gonna make them go moldy and gonna make them go bad faster. So that's why you only wanna wash what you're gonna use. So, I have this handy dandy lettuce and berry spinner. It comes with two size baskets. The bigger one is for lettuce, for green beans, for any kind of heartier vegetable. And this little one is for berries or anything that is a little softer or prone to squishing. Hmm. The smaller basket doesn't spin as fast. So your berries are not gonna get smushed through the little holes in the basket. So we just pop down on the top a little bit. There's a, can you see all the mm -hmm. water kind of splashing out and yep. catching on the sides? <coughs> Excuse me. So nifty. Isn't that cool? And they're not going to be bone dry, but they'll be dry when we get them out. That is so nifty. I didn't know they had two different size yeah. baskets for those. So, and then this one's got a break, so let's step in and take a look inside. So see, they're not dry, dry, but they're a whole lot drier anyway. And now, just for fun, I'm going to put this in here. And I'm going to put these in the big basket, right? And you would think... They're not all stacked on top of each other. That's got to be better, right? That's about the same as I spun the other ones. <laughs> Makes me dizzy. And the, I know, right? It, it spins a little faster. You've got, physics says, you've got more centrifugal force pushing them out and kind of swooshing them up against the edges of the basket. So we'll take a look at that here in a second and see what it looks like. But so let's see, here is a berry and this edge here was up against the basket hmm. while it was spinning. Still looks pretty normal, right? Mm -hmm. Can't really tell. So let's take a look at these. And these are not super ripe, so this may be kind of an experiment all for nothing. Oh yeah, that really didn't show anything at all. So I've done this before with really ripe berries <laughs> that are kind of soft and they just like smush, smush into oh. the thing. So, anyway, that was well. A, I'm glad that didn't that happen. That was failed science. Because we but need hey, those. Yeah. So these are great. So now let's talk about cutting strawberries, right? What do you do? I need a cutting board to do that. And not that big of a So has everybody seen the straw trick? Yes. Strawberries, right? I've never tried that until this morning. I think it's a pain. It's not worth that. like. That was kind of my thought. All right. So the thing is, you take a straw, you push it through the bottom of the strawberry, and you pop the top out. Yeah. Which kinda, it's not that hard, um, but it only popped half the top out, so now you gotta do it again. 
and it still didn't pop the whole top out. So now you gotta do it again. And there. So now we have a strawberry <laughs> with a hole in the bottom. So I mean that's great, and we really didn't waste a whole lot of the fruit. Right. Except I think that this part down at the bottom is the better tasting <laughs> stuff. And that's where we've just lost the fruit. Yep. Right? So there's here's yeah. that. And let's see if I can find one. He's about the same size. Let's just cut him in half and see what it would look like. All right. Yep. So here's our, our cord strawberry and our not cord strawberry. Now the nice thing about this, if you don't like this kind of center white part, is the coring does take that out. I don't really care. I eat that. Yeah. It doesn't bother me. So what I normally will do is just kind of cut the tops off. This one, he's a little bit green here, so I just cut all that off because that doesn't taste as good, and I just want to eat this red ripe part. If you have a beautifully red berry like this, <laughs> then I will just do like kind of a V and cut down on one side of the stem and cut down on the other side of the stem and then pop that off. And that was, to me, that's faster oh, yeah. than the straw thing. Oh yeah. And now watch what happens when you cut that V in the top. Look at this. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna slice this strawberry. And look. Now you have strawberry hearts. Oh How cute is that? Also wonderful for Mother's Day. Let's see, here's the straw. So nifty. The straw, strawberry that we did, sliced the same way. And he just kind of looks sad. So, yeah. look how easy that was. We broke YouTube again. Are we back? We're back. Okay. Hi. I don't know what happened. This happened last week too. So I guess I've got to do some technical troubleshooting to figure it out. But, so I'm going to show you one more cute way to slice strawberries that if you want to be, if you want to look fancy and impress your friends and neighbors, this is a great way to do it. And again, it's very simple, very easy. No one will know. So kind of like if you've ever seen my slice an onion video, um, you just, you slice almost all the way through, but not quite. So we're just going to make some slices almost all the way up to the green leafy part, but not quite. And then look at this. You can spread that out on a plate like that. Hook it over the rim of a glass. And then it's decorative. And have a nice fruity, Ooh. that's a big berry to do that with. <laughs> nice fruity cocktail <laughs> right but look it looks so fancy it does. and it didn't take any time at all to make that happen so cute and, and then it's an edible garnish and who doesn't like that the hearts are still my favorite the, aren't those cute and how that was so simple yeah um one thing i did forget to tell you about choosing strawberries at the grocery store or at the farmer's market or wherever you are strawberries will not continue to ripen once they are picked so what you see in the grocery store is what you get. It's not like if you bring home an orange that's a little bit green or a pear that's a little bit hard still. Those will continue to ripen on your counter. So um, so you can shoot, you can get them at kind of various stages, one that's ready to eat today and one that's not gonna be ready to eat for two or three days. But strawberries, what you get now is what you're gonna have two or three days later. They will not continue to ripen. So if you see a, um, a pint of strawberries that most of them are still pretty green like this, they're gonna stay pretty green like this. So um, again, not a big deal. This red part is still gonna taste delicious. Uh, it's just keeping an eye on what you're choosing and knowing why. One last thing we're gonna try is this egg slicer. Have you, have you seen this? this there's, this is a, a kitchen hack that floats around Facebook all the time that you can use an egg slicer to slice a strawberry. Um, I have tried it and haven't been all that impressed with it. We're going to pick a riper strawberry to try it with today. I have never seen this. And th it may, I'm going to be honest, it may just be my egg slicer. But So you just put it in there like you would do an egg and then do that. And you're supposed to get... Oh, I get stuck. Beautiful strawberry <laughs> slices. That didn't so much happen. Um, so, kind of. Yeah, it's totally stuck in there. Um, so, there's there's that kitchen hack. That <laughs> might work if you have a different egg slicer than this one. But sure don't work with mine. 
Um, that's fun. Yeah, that just made a mess. That just made a huge mess. <laughs> I could have sliced four strawberries by now. Let's see. Should we try it? We'll do it one more. Let's see if I can find a smushier bright blue one to do it with. How <laughs> oh, ridiculous. All right, let's try one more. Here's a good, here's a good ripe one. This one, this trick, I'll tell you right now, this will not work if your strawberry is not super soft and ripe. Let's see if this will work. Mm -mm, it's stuck in there again. Yeah, I'm gonna call this a big old fail. Yeah. Again, maybe it's part of my egg slicers issue, but I don't know. It's, it's stuck in there, guys. <laughs> That beats strawberry to us. All right, we're going to deal with that later. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that so, sounds like um, a disaster. So there's your, there's your real life test of the Facebook kitchen hack of using egg slicer to slice your strawberries. Feel free to try with your own and let me know how it goes. But don't plan on that being your only way that you're going to slice strawberries when your mom's on her way over for brunch because she'll laugh at you. My mom would laugh at me anyway, and it would be yeah. well deserved. Yeah. So, okay, so we're still waiting on our shortcakes to bake. So in the meantime, let's check on the garden plants that we started last week. Yay! So last week we started seeds for tomatoes and basil. And if you remember, um, I said that I had to go find a place to put them where they would be in a nice sunny spot, but away from helping four-year-olds. <laughs> and away from helping cats. Um, my solution for that was, oh, Alexa, stop the timer. Um, my solution for that was a very sunny window in the basement um, where I promptly forgot about them because they don't go down there. <laughs> so, Alexa, stop the timer. No one has been listening to me today. Oh, she's being so not defiant. the electronics, not the children, not anybody. Open up another bottle back there. I know, right? Um, so I put these down in the basement Friday last week and, um, forgot all about them. Didn't look at them, didn't water them, didn't do anything until yesterday. <laughs> so, um, they were not being babysat. They were on their own for six days, but they didn't die. Look at this. Yeah. Um, they did very well. So I'm going to be honest. I don't remember which are the tomatoes and which are the basil because I didn't mark them. So the basil know. was first. Well, yeah, but was Did it this way or was it this way? I don't know. And I've moved them since then and they all just fell over. So I don't know. So I don't know. Well, um, we'll be able to tell. One's going to be red and very, <laughs> very, very juicy. <laughs> and one's just going to be a bunch of leaves. Yeah. Um, you can't tell right now in this very early stage, but in another two weeks tops three weeks tops we'll be able to tell because they'll start to grow um their next set of leaves and those will look very different from the tomato and the basil. so you can they started to grow why didn't kill them um this one here we've got one popping out right here too i don't know if you saw that one he's hmm. starting to pop right there and there's one actually wait can you see it he's down in between oh there he is see the, the little Bottom. green down there. I don't know. I must have dropped a seed or something. All right. Let me check these shortcakes. Oh, yeah. That's good stuff right there. Okay. Whoa. All right. Let's finish up the garden segment for the day, and then we'll go take a look at shortcakes. So this I planted with my son Sunday last week. So this is day five. This is called a root viewer. And how cute is this? We bought this at the Children's Museum, Children's Museum of Evansville. And it comes with carrot, onion, and radish seeds to plant. So we planted these all on the same day last Sunday. And they've just been sitting in my kitchen. Um, so I've been paying closer attention to them. But I really I haven't watered them much. But so this first one is the radishes. And you remember we talked last time about planting four to six seeds in the same little pod mm -hmm. and then seeing which seedlings grew and which ones were strongest and thinning them out so you've only got one. 
this is too many plants to be growing in this little tiny area. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull a couple of these right now. So we'll pull this one. And the goal is to keep the, um, the healthiest, the strongest looking. But actually, before I finish doing that, let's take a look. Can you see the roots? It's a little Ooh, kind of cool. humid in there. But can you, you see the yeah. white thread-like roots coming all the way down to the bottom in there? Awesome. And this is a radish. A radish is a root vegetable. So as the radish continues to grow and develop, we'll be able to watch the radish form underneath and keep growing. Hmm. So let's see. I think... We need to get one of those. Yeah, isn't this cool? I lost my axe. I'm afraid to poke it. Yeah, <laughs> you think? <laughs> Danielle's got her son Sawyer here hanging out with us today, and he thinks one of my cats took his toy, which is totally possible. But look, look how long these roots are. Okay, how cool is that? All right, so I'm going to leave these two in here for now, and we'll kind of let them duke it out and grow and see what happens. So the onions and the carrots haven't done a whole lot. But what you can see is here's two little carrot seeds Ooh. starting to sprout roots. Now, they should not be this deep. When I planted them, they should have been just like a quarter inch or so under the top of the soil. But let me show you carrot seeds and why that may have been a problem. <laughs> we talked about how teeny tiny oh, they were. basil seeds yeah. were last time. Those are carrot seeds. Wow. They are itty bitty. And there's probably like 10 in that little tiny thing. So those are the carrot seeds. Here's the onion seeds. They're not quite so tiny, but they are as black as the dirt. So that was very hard to see. Mm -hmm. And then here are the radish seeds. Bigger and an actual color that you could see mm. when we planted them. So Joseph has had a lot of fun watching these grow over the last few days. Um, and I'm really excited to see if we actually can grow some edible vegetables in there. Yeah. That'd be cool. So, all right, so that's the garden stuff. Um, I'm gonna try to remember to water these better. <laughs> uh, the, so, and we had talked last time about kind of making a little indoor greenhouse with a clear plastic tray or a clear plastic lid on top of this. I never found one, so I also didn't have that. So um, that's another reason why these are maybe taking a little longer than normal to do anything. Um, you know, lack of water and lack of humidity, but whatever. Um, but the trick with those, with those lids is once your plants start to sprout and there will be a few days, like right now they could still be covered. But once your plants start to grow, you want to take that cover off because then it's too much heat and too much humidity and the plants will either rot or cook mm. in there. So, um, so yeah, once you've got seedlings coming up, you do wanna make sure that you take that lid off if you're doing it with a lid, or not. So, <laughs> there we go with those. All right, so now let's take a look at our shortcakes, guys. <coughs> Come on over. They smell good. They smell delicious. That's, that is like the ultimate baking trick. If you can't smell it, it's not done yet. There's a giant bug on my ceiling. It's one of those stink bugs, stink too. Bug. Oh my god, it's huge. Um, so if you if you can't smell it, then it's it's not done yet. And when you can just start to smell whatever it is, um, then it's really really close, and you got to start keeping an eye on it. So these are shortcakes. These are the ones that we just did today, just half an hour ago, with the cut in butter. And you can see the butter has kind of like melted out and sort of made a mess on the baking stone and that's fine. Mm -hmm. These are ones that I did earlier today. These had softened butter. I did them in my electric mixer. So, but I did them very similar to what we did today. I put in all the dry ingredients and then I put in the softened butter and I just beat the heck out of that until it was all incorporated. And then I added in the wet ingredients, mixed that up till it was incorporated and then plopped them out on the stone and baked them the same way. So you can see there's not a whole lot of difference. They look pretty similar. Um, these maybe have like a crummier texture on top where these are maybe a little smoother, maybe. But if you were just to show me these and say which is which, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Right. But where I think, and I could be wrong because I've been wrong already today, where I think is gonna be the difference is when we break them open and look inside. 
so these are still going to be pretty hot. So here is our, yeah, let's just bring it over here. Okay, so this is our cut in butter. And let's kind of break him open. Let's see what he looks like. Other than steamy. hot and steamy. Ooh, he smells so good. And, mm, the top has like that nice that's not good work. melted crunch or crunch from that melted butter that baked on the top there. Okay, so that's the inside. And here is one that had softened butter. It's, it kind of looks drier. Did it feel, and it feels more dense. Like this feels just kind of like, here, let me get you. <laughs> let me get you a, a mm -hmm. piping hot yeah. one. So like if you just, there it's, the same exact recipe, just one had mm -hmm. melted butter and one had cut in butter. Um, the the one that had, or excuse me, softened butter. The one that had the softened butter feels heavier, like it feels denser. Um, and I, so the whole the whole deal with cutting in the butter like that is that as it bakes, the butter melts and then leaves like a little hole where the clump of butter was. Mm. Right, and it, when it melts, it kind of runs out all over the thing, but it gives you like this kind of nice crust on the bottom, mm -hmm. and you get this nice golden brown, crunchy texture on the top. But look, see how pretty that is. The nice, and can you hear? Mm -hmm. Right, that that's still that's perfect. I love it. <laughs> um, <coughs> so when you like when you have those nice flaky biscuits. That's because they had butter cut in mm. and where the butter melted and left a little hole, it kind of pulls apart into those flaky layers. Same thing that we did here with these shortcakes. Whereas these ones that, um, that I've mixed the softened butter in, they just don't have that same kind of texture, right? It's, it's not as, not as light. It's not as flaky. Um, they'll still taste delicious here. I'll prove that to you. That I'm not great. That I know I'm right. <laughs> It was very good. They're gonna be better hot too. So it just changes the texture and it changes the texture. It changes the flavor a little bit. This, the ones that we cut in the butter shape, you can really taste the butter flavor. Okay. It's got a very different texture. It does have a little different taste, even though the recipe, the ingredients are exactly the same. Right. But just the way that we prepared it. It tastes just a little bit different. Was the other kind that you already had done, was that more dry? It is a little more dry. That's what it looked like yep. when you broke it open. It's still delicious. I will still eat them all. <laughs> right. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to me. <laughs> um, so, homemade, guys, homemade strawberry shortcakes. That wasn't that hard. Nope. That really wasn't that hard. I made a plate. I'm going to plate one up. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. And don't serve these to your mother without a glass of wine. That's right. Okay, so you can just put this, slap this down on the plate all in one piece. You can break it up. If you have built yours up a little bit taller, slice it in half um, and use it like a bun and kind of put one down and put your strawberries in the middle and then put the other piece on top. However you want to do it. It's all, it tastes the same no matter what it looks like. Give your strawberries a little toss here to get that syrup coating everything. Throw a couple of big spoonfuls of those. Can you, can, listen, can you hear? The sugar. You hear the sugar okay. on the bottom? Oh, so good. All right, we're gonna get a nice spoonful of that syrupy sugar. And here's the best part. It's still in the refrigerator. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Dude, who knows what this is? Does anybody is know? that your homemade Cool yeah, Whip? This is homemade whipped cream. Whipped cream that we ate by the spoonful last yes, summer. Yes, we're going to do it again. <laughs> so I was going to make this on camera today because it's so easy. But we've done it before. We'll do it again, don't worry. Um, but I will put the link to that video in the description below in a little while. Guys, whipping cream, sugar, vanilla. Put it in your mixer and walk away. We'll turn it on and then walk away. <laughs> That's it.
It's, I used to, when we would go out to a restaurant and the menu said homemade whipped cream, I used to feel so <laughs> fancy, right? Homemade whipped cream, how special is that? It's still pretty special, but it's so darn easy. Yeah. It's better than the stuff out of the can. It's better than the stuff in the bucket. I love it. And this is the only way that I will do it anymore. You can customize your flavors a little bit. When I make this in the fall for pumpkin pie season, I threw a little bit of pumpkin pie spice in there. I added a little extra vanilla in it today because I wanted the vanilla flavor with the shortcakes. But guys, it's so easy. So I will put the link to the other video down below. I have the recipe for homemade whipped cream on My Fearless Kitchen, and I will drop that link down below as well. So I think that's it. We're done. And I'm going to finish my wine, and I'm going to have my strawberry shortcake <laughs> for lunch slash snack. <laughs> And we'll call it a day. Do we have any questions? I don't think so. All right. Do you have any questions? I just want to know how it tastes. What's the, oh, wait. I almost forgot. Oh, yeah. Ta -da! Fancy, fancy. Look at that. Look at that. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. How, should I eat some on camera? Yeah, of course. And then chug the rest of that wine. Chug the rest of that wine, <laughs> and then we can all go back to work. Or lack thereof. <laughs> Who are you kidding? We've been working this whole time. <laughs> all right, like strawberries and shortcake and whipped cream. Mm. That's so good. Are you going to be able to it's save so some good. of this for? Uh, Mother's Day, so Are you can you enjoy me? it <laughs> on Mother's Day. I'm gonna go with probably not. It's so the shortcakes are still warm; they don't have to still be warm. Uh, you could pop them in the microwave for just like 10 seconds, and they'll warm up really nicely. Um, but yeah, they're still warm. The edges are just a little crispy from all that melted butter. Strawberries are cold and sweet. The whipped cream is cold and homemade. Oh, it's so good. It's perfect. Happy Mother's Day, guys! Thanks for joining me. Have a great weekend. I will put the show notes down below in a couple of days with links to everything we've been talking about. I'll drop you a